what page are we going to start on? Well, this is one where we are. I'm just I'm just doing this as a freebie extra oh, for us. Okay. So so I I had a paper that I was going to put together. The, there is a page in your study guide. There's just a blank page uh, for you to take notes if you want. You oh, OK. Take study notes. guide. Okay. But, uh, but you but it's just blank. So if you wanted to just get a paper somewhere, you can. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, the the first thing I wanted to do, let's see, I want to I want to start us off. Uh, all of us are in agreement that we need to not argue, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, and all of us are in agreement that. Hi, Levi. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I'm not on mute. Well, good reminder for all of us to mute ourselves, huh? <laughs> okay. Hi, TJ. Yeah. Um, hi, Thomas. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I I have a paper that I could share with you that give you some verses. So let's see about sharing this. So um and I, I'm happy to leave up the, the people on the side of the thing. Um, our verse, I just want to start us off with our verse that we've been looking at this whole study is Colossians 3.15 that says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. And this day, we are especially focusing on the next phrase. It says, Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be yes. thankful. So this, this uh, uh, topic today on applying what we've learned to arguments is specifically focused on this because this is saying that, especially in the body of Christ, um, as members of one body of believers, you were called to peace. Um, so I, I want to... If you're okay with it, I don't want to apply this to uh, things on the internet and, you know, all of the, the, the friction and the controversies that are going on. I'd like to keep this closer to home um, with if we have a husband or, or, or if we have, um, you know, children that are old enough where there uh, could be friction in it that I want to apply it to our nearest and dearest kind of a thing. Is that okay? Yes. All right. So, and the other verse that applies to this is uh, Colossians 3, 8, that says, but now you also, you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice. So what's malice? Is that mean to one another. Huh? Being just plain mean. Be meanness, yes. Okay. Slander. So what's slander? Talking about them. But, uh, false, false information. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there ever a time in an argument when we may over overstate the egregiousness of what somebody did and 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 throw on the pile? Uh, things that they didn't actually do, yeah. slinging accusations. And I think that slander fits into that as well, where we, where we, are, we are going beyond and accusing in a way that goes beyond the facts of the day, okay? So I think that's mm -hmm. part of it. And, okay. and filthy talk, um, I think any time that there's a, a, a disparaging, con, you know, the, you know, the, I mean, you know, jerk and okay, you know, oh, you're, yeah. you're just a blankety blank, you know, whatever that blankety yeah. blank is, if, if we would talk about it as a blankety blank, mm -hmm. that's filthy talk, mm -hmm. and that should not be coming out of our mouth, okay, it, it it should, it should not be coming out of our mouth. So um, based on these two verses, um, if you should happen to find yourself in the middle of a heated argument, 
before we get into anything of the neurology and you know brain science and all of that stuff what would christ mindset likely be toward most arguments peace okay looking for peace looking for reconciliation okay so our goal needs to be looking for peace and looking for reconciliation yes um and uh uh, if we if we get hijacked into something and find ourselves in the middle of the argument, what would be Pilate's task at that moment? Well, see why I'm especially see what why I am being triggered to anger. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Are you are you uh, recording this? Yes, it's being recorded. Oh. Okay, I didn't see it. I, usually I can see that you're recording it. And, uh, the button uh, is up in the, uh, when it's not on the page, uh, the button is up in the corner. No problem. Uh, I think that that's, I think that we're being triggered by something that we haven't, we haven't worked out. Yeah, it may be. And I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, uh, now, on the other side, I think Louisa and I were talking about this, and I don't know if it was in the class or not in the class um, last week. Um, the idea of there are some people who want peace at any price. Um, is mm -hmm. that um, our goal? I mean, is that what we should, you know, aim for to have peace at any price? No. No. Why would? What would you? You know? Why did you say no? I think sometimes if you're if the price is going to be your well-being, that's not a price that you should pay. You know, if it's a sin or a really mm -hmm. uh, an issue that really needs to be dealt with, just making peace and letting it be hidden, swept under the rug, will cause more problems. If not out and about in your own heart, it'll cause problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your your salvation that you never want to jeopardize that. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, I want to, let's see how much, how are we doing? Oh, well, we are way late. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to, um, let me put this on so that I can pull this down. And I want you to see, um, uh, this is like our, rea our level of possible reaction in an argument, okay? We could have no reaction, or we could have some reaction. This is like a healthy person's reaction, or we could have mm -hmm. a more intense reaction, or mm -hmm. we could be the hair on fire. <laughs> okay, all right. So the the topic here, you know, whatever the topic of the argument might be, might warrant if you're if you're both upset about it, might warrant a reaction of maybe a three three to four, okay? But what, what Diana is talking about is if we have a more, you know, intense reaction, so we're like between seven and eight, you know, my, that mm -hmm. might be my reaction is based on my baggage, you know, what, whatever right. there is in me, okay? Mm -hmm. And I wanna make two comments about this before we go on and, and go, okay, so, if we are able to stick to this, we could possibly do all of this within the framework of being in normal mode and not flipping mm -hmm. into fight or flight or freeze, okay? But if we have a more intense reaction one way or another, that's, that's our reaction based on our baggage. What, you know, what's, what is it that we're bringing into the, into mm -hmm. the discussion? Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, uh, okay. I so I think I'm just going to leave this here and go. Yes. Back. Wait a minute. Go back to stop share. Okay. All right. Does that makes sense. So we're back together again. All right. So um, I want to now uh, switch to um, do a PowerPoint. How are we doing? Good. Okay. I have a question, Didi. Yes. Yes. And you know, when Jesus went in and overturned the tables, there was righteous anger 
Yes. Yeah. That it was righteous anger. And he did act out in a very emotional way, if you want to say. That way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we are there. We are seeing that there are times when um, when, you know, our, our reaction is not exactly a peaceful reaction. Yes. And that's exactly why I brought up the thing is, is our task at all times to bring, to come to peace about it. And I think Jesus example in the temple was no, that Jesus who had, who never brought baggage. Exactly. Yeah. There were times when he, the, the, the thing that needed to be done was to express a righteous anger. But he was expressing it based on all of the Gentiles. He wasn't right. basing it on, you know, people treating him mean. Okay. No, it was on what they were doing okay. to the temple. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? So basically what you're saying is that it's something... Um, makes us upset because a lie is being or in other words that, that we need to set something straight yeah right With, without we need to, to for, for the sake of both parties yes you need to be yeah. speak up i think though that we have to be careful and realize that jesus like you said did he had no baggage and did not sin yeah, I think it's very, very, very few times that we actually are able to claim that righteous anger. We're angry because we're prideful, we're upset, we're not happy with how we're being perceived. Yes. So, yeah, I don't think it's often at all that we can claim righteous anger. Yeah, no. yeah. No. So we're we're admitting to the possibility, and we don't want to say, "Okay, you're going to be a doormat." Okay. Exactly. But, Thank you. But our task in the middle of an argument is to pull ourselves together and collect ourselves. Yes. Okay. So with that in mind, let me quickly do screen share. And I want to go back to where is this? This is back from when I did that first workshop mm -hmm. years ago. Okay. Come on. Come on, why isn't it doing it? Um, okay, I'm trying to make it. Can you see it there? Oh, how is it? Okay, why isn't it going? Can you see anything of my my your feet, my, your boots, <laughs> my feet and my boots? Okay, but it's, yeah, and the grass. And then on the on the left, you see the little diagrams. Okay. All right. Collecting ourselves, uh, applying this to arguments. For some reason, it's not allowing me to pull it to full screen. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah, something's locked. Here. Okay, something's messed up with it. Okay, so you can see it okay there? Yes. yes. Okay, so so we're going to, okay, so let's look oh, at there these two people. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Both of these are at an eight or a nine on the, you know, window of tolerance, you know, scale. Okay, so they're both close to hair on fire. So what can we guess about them? Guess about them? Yeah, what, based on what we know about someone who's in this kind of a thing, let's uh -huh. see if we can go to the next one. There's baggage involved. That's what we can guess. Their pilot isn't in control. Uh -huh. Pilot is not in control. The dominant message they both really, really believe is that they're in, in uh, danger. Yes. I'm not safe. I must run or fight. Can you see that? Right. I can so, understand that. I'm so sorry that I can't seem to flip it. I don't know why that is. Okay. So do you see that? The, the mode that they're in is a mode that's combative and that feels like they're not safe. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next one. Okay. I want you to write down the word flooding somewhere. And flooding. I want you to write yeah. down this little thing. Okay. I want you, how many of you have Fitbit? 
on how many of you are wearing a Fitbit? Yeah. Okay. Wearing a what? You know, Fitbit watch. Where is oh, it? Fitbit, you yeah, heart rate? I have one. Okay, what does it say your heart rate is right now? Give me some numbers. 77. 77. Who else? Come on. No, a second. He just wants me to work more right now. Okay. <laughs> it says 62. 70, it's 79. 79. Who else? We have a 65. 59. 59. 59. Okay. See, nothing is going on. We are not triggered. But right. this flooding happens if the heart rate gets more than 100 beats per minute. Oh, yeah. In an argument. Um, this is comes from John Gottman. Remember, I was telling you about he was talking about, you know, um, uh, I mean, did I talk about John Gottman and the love shack and, and doing no. studies on, uh, on married couples? Did I tell you all that? No. Oh, oh, let me tell you about that. Okay. So, <laughs> John, Gottman. John Gottman is a famous marriage counselor person who did just all kinds of, um, of uh, testing of physical reactions of married couples when they are arguing, okay? And so he bought, he's a, he was a statistician, a, a mathematician by training, and then he got kind of roped into, you know, testing out what happens with married couples. And so <laughs> he, went, he, he bought an a apartment uh, that they dubbed the love shack and it was so in all of the you know living not the bathroom or the bedroom but in the living kitchen and yeah. living room space there's cameras all over everywhere and then there's a table where people can sit and they get all hooked up to wiring um you know to and brains and eye what's happening with their eyes muscles sweat everything oh wow and so so he would invite these married couples and they would stay in this place and then he would say oh okay i want you to sit here all hooked up to stuff and i want you to talk about something that you don't agree on and so he so with the monitors on it he said this is where this comes from if the heart rate gets higher than 100 beats per minute the person has flooded mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yes. If that person has flooded, they cannot hear the substance of what you're saying. Oh, absolutely. Is that amazing or what? So I want you to write that down on your notes. Flooding. I actually okay. want to share that when I um, do my drills, when I'm about to do stand down and I'm actually worked up. In my notes, I write what my heart rate is when we start because I know myself and it's always high. Yeah. And I kind of won't let myself leave that space until it's back down. So I, all of my, you know, you have us doing on those little charts. I put what, it, what I started and how I ended because yes. that's for me that's a definite. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's <laughs> wonderful. It, it, so now let me think, you know, think about this. Uh, what Gottman says is that husbands or boyfriends are particularly um, uh, prone to flooding. Uh -huh. Okay, and they don't you won't necessarily see it. So he's so he's taking you know he's having the camera on the person, and they're not necessarily giving away the game. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. but, but they but they're 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 taking the pulse rate you know, the heart rate. So they know. And so oh. they're saying this guy is over a hundred. And so with that, in terms of the other things that they're monitoring, the, the brain is not, has kind of checked out. Mm -hmm. so oh my gosh, Miss Didi, I, Rafi and I need to, to talk to you tomorrow at church about it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, I need to check. Maybe you can ask him what his heart rate is first. Yeah, the little monitor for your finger. Yeah. It'll do your uh, oxygen, heart rate, yeah. blood pressure. Okay. 
So this is one thing that when we get to talking about how we can, you know, help each other to lower, is if both of you know that high heart rate is a means that you're really not understanding what the other person is saying, there might be time for a timeout. Just, yeah. Just to go for, with this. Okay. That's so great. So okay. So what external clues tell me that this guy is at a nine? Uh, veins popping out. Veins popping out. What else? Facial expression. Yes. What else? Probably yelling. Yelling. Yes. How rigidly is he holding that phone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? When we're talking the about... Fingers are right. Right. Look, at that. Look at his finger. I mean, that yeah. was... Boom. He yeah, ain't going to move. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. So, so what... <laughs> <you're not watching. laughs> he's at a nine. Okay. Aww. What are the clues? What can you see? The facial expression. The hands, the hair, the hair, the hair. The hair. The the body. It's like perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so describe to me what what are the clues in her face? First of all, the first thing you can see it not only her hair looks like it's on fire, but her mouth is wide open. Wide That's open. Scary. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what else? I see that the uh, the yeah. forehead her forehead is scrunched. Scrunched up forehead. Like she, Peering in, she's yes. focusing. What are the hands doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Want to kill? Yeah. Okay. How about? They look like. That. How about this poor little baby? Oh, yeah. uh, uh, fear. Bottle flight. Fear. This is yeah, definitely fear. flight. Okay. Looks like he was uh, surprised. Yes, and you see the lip, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. covering the lower lip and the. Lot mm -hmm. trembling. Okay. Yeah. So now let's, <laughs> I want you to do something. I want you, wherever you are, and, and we're only looking at this. I want <laughs> you, where you are, to reproduce this thing. Mouth really wide open, hands you at your side, shoulders are tight in. <laughs> okay. Now, this is body brain. So now you, you're doing that. I want you to say how what are the internal clues that you feel there as you're in that position? It, it looks as if she's screaming. Okay. She's had it. How do you feel? There's a tension. A tension. tension. The tension, yes. Yes. Okay. Actually, actually I, I really when I did that, I could feel my attention being on my on my position on on what yeah. was going on in my mouth and my head yeah my mm -hmm. yeah yes okay now let me do so now oh what's going on with this yeah it's not helping me okay amy and hippo and adrenaline okay <laughs> um this is a, something to write down in life or death of danger Amy and Hippo working together with adrenaline is usually a reliable help, right? If somebody mm -hmm. starts shooting bullets, the adrenaline can help you to just yes. instinctively, you know, to run. to run or to or to or to stay and fight or to stay and fight or to you know immediately you know pop down under the table or something. Uh -huh. But in an argument, if Amy and Hippo are highly activated and they're running the show, plus adrenaline in an argument, it's usually a big liability. Yeah. Yes. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you're wanting to actually run or actually fight, but you're not. So there's an incomplete action. And so that makes it more intense. So what you, you use your words as right, to weapon. okay okay so it is so it is not helpful not helpful at all okay okay so now let's look at this in an argument if the danger is real i need pilot as suit asap to react wisely okay so remember we said don't do the stand down drill 
until unless it's safe to do. But right. when we are in an argument, the danger is, I mean, when the danger, when the, when it's a, a, a real danger, we need pilot as soon as possible so that we'll react wisely. So we want to pull out of, out of fight or flight as soon as we can mm -hmm. so that we can react, you know, more in a level headed way. Okay. If the danger is less real, like in an, just in an argument, I need pilot ASAP to guide us back into the window of tolerance. Danger. If yeah. the danger is less real, so like it's an argument, I need pilot to guide us back into the d window of tolerance. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay, all right. Um, let's see, the next one. So there are two strategies for reconnecting with pilot during the heat of an argument, okay? Um, so two... So here's what you can do to reconnect with your pilot because you're not going to stand there and start doing the motion to do long breath in and out, right? No. 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 <laughs> if you start to do that, the other person's going to get angry at you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. yeah, I can see that. Hold a minute. Let me see. <laughs> okay, right? Yeah. But, so the first strategy is this. Choose to mentally step back. And we're going to do three three ways that you can mentally step back. Okay, are you able? Do you have a paper to write this? Yeah, choose. Okay, choose Men mentally step. So number one is to observe the whole room. Remember when when um, the an animal uh, recognizes the lion. Okay. Yes you know uh just about you know in the tall grass ready to jump the mm -hmm. everything is fixated on the predator right yeah. so if you're in an argument you are you see this little diagram of the people down below uh -huh. it, it, in an argument this person is is totally fixated on this person yeah. okay and and because they're that's the that's what they see as being the enemy, okay. So to so to help us step back is to is to move our 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 you know stare at the other person and start looking at the room. And if you are in a heated argument, to, you need to be subtle about this, but 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 do it in a way that helps you to step back. So, you know, like if, if the person's standing in front of me and I'm standing there and there's a rug, you know, on the floor or things on the wall behind the person, this is to, to in a subtle way, start looking at the floor and, and, and notice the things on the rug or notice the picture on the wall or, you know, and, and see, that's helping me to get my focus off. And that's giving the message to Amy and Hippo. Oh, it, it must be less danger because I'm not fixating on the enemy. Oh, uh -huh. you see what I'm saying? So the, the second part is to observe your own body clues. So yeah. this, and this is something that you can do while the other person is yelling. <laughs> I know. Okay, so it's it's shifting my focus to just kind of check in with myself and just kind of okay, it, are my fists clenched? You know, I mean, I, am I tense? What's what is my you know mentally think about what my face is doing? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to observe my own and then observe the body clues of your opponent. That's why I was asking you what what did what clues do you get? Okay, and I so I want you to you know just look at the person's face and their body and I and we've stepped back so now instead of just arguing we're just looking at the person. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? All all three of these things will help me this 
tells me to step back into pilot. Okay, because if I'm observing the room, my cues, the person's body cues, I've stepped back and I'm looking at it instead of just being there in my little circle. Yeah. Oh. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And, and it forces me to do it in a way that does not make a big deal about it. Right. Okay. I could see maybe that that would maybe start con confusing the other person and saying, well, they're not arguing back. They're not paying attention to me. You know, yeah. maybe yeah. that it would maybe it'd bring them down yeah. or accelerate them. Yes. So the next strategy is to do micro movements to ground yourself or to unrev in a subtle way. Okay. So, um, and does that make sense? So mm -hmm. the word micro movement, because we don't want to draw attention to what we're doing, but we want to do it anyway, that, that helps us to unrev. Okay. So the toes, it's like I'm, the person is yammering on and on. I'm uh -huh. kind of keeping my eye on what the person is saying, but I'm my my mind is focusing on my toes, and and uh, and squishing the floor or or clenching my feet muscles, to just you know so that I'm not to ground myself or the hand. Remember the hands would be clenched mm -hmm. if I'm in fight or flight, so I'm relaxing the hands. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, the, and relax. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You go back just real okay. quick to, yes. uh, oh, unrev in unrev. a subtle way. In okay. A, you got it? Yes. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and relax your body language. Okay. So, experiment. I want you now, uh, right now, to to make your body like the body of the lady in the white shirt, okay? Make your body, arms crossed, okay? Mm -hmm. the, the face is sort of away mm -hmm. and not happy. You feel that? Disgusted, yes. Yeah, so but that's disgusted. also a defensive. That's also a defensive. Um, yeah, crossed yeah. arms, yes. yes. And I think that what we're doing is unconsciously, we're talking about the body languages. I think we're also signaling that we are on the defensive, that they, yeah. that they have an upper hand. Yeah, mm -hmm. so are you feeling that? Are you feeling what that is? Now relax your body into the, into the posture of the lady in the green and white, okay? Do you see how she's uncrossed her arms She's like this, where she's more listening, and it's yes. open. I'm looking at the person. I'm actually, and you see her face is relaxed. Yeah. It's, uh, to me, it's saying I'm listening. Yes. Okay, so we, we need to switch into a body language that says that I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. And that's that's all without doing any any talking. I've I, that's been totally nonverbal, right? Yes. And in an argument, you know, most of the messages that we're sending are coming either from our tone of voice or from our body posture. Right? Yes, by relaxing your body. Yeah, they're seeing that you're not upset that you're coming down. Yeah, and uh, start bringing them down. Yes. So now um, this alone tends to. I don't know if you. I don't know if you need to write any of this down. I'm just. This is what happens. This alone tends to lower the window of tolerance number, because we've changed the body cues that we send out, and this. I, I love Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turns away wrath. Yes. So this has helped mm -hmm. us to get ourselves into the place where we could do a soft answer. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Because mm -hmm. by us changing into a non hair on fire stance, <laughs> our, 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 our emotions have followed that. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Because body brain, you know, just, mm -hmm. oh, I guess we're, we're more open to listening now, you know, okay. Oh, to open up your body. Yeah. To open up yourself. Um, yeah. Saying, I'm, I'm listening and let's work this out. Yeah. No. Okay. So now let's go on to the next. Step. So how to move both of you back into the window of tolerance, which is the best place to resolve serious issues. So that's our goal. So we have done by us doing what, what our two strategies that's helped us to pull back into the window of tolerance for ourselves. Okay. And it, and we're not addressing the issue of the argument. It's to say, you know what? I need to be calmer to be able to resolve this. Okay. Okay. Now, um, we're going to do the cup and the frog. And I'm bound in determined <laughs> to show us. Um, I, I want you to see what's at stake. So I'm going to come back to this. And this little origami frog is the vulnerable feeling. And I'm going to show you a whole video on this. Okay. Um, and then, but I want to make this, this is something I want you to write down, okay? Make and receive repair attempts. And I'm defining repair attempt. It, and this is John Gottman out of his thing. Because he said, as, he, as they were recording all these people and their reactions, he started noticing that, that marriages that are going to be successful our marriages were in the relationship, in the dialogue, back and forth, talking about this thing that they don't agree on, that, uh -huh. that both people tend to make a repair attempt if it gets too heated. And, the, and successful marriages are ones where the other person recognizes that the person made a repair attempt and they, and they received it. They said, oh, okay. So a repair attempt is any statement or action, silly or otherwise, that prevents negativity from escalating out of control. So it's like the argument starts, you know, there's a little bit of friction and then somebody, you know, ramps it up a little and then somebody ramps it up a little and, you know, and oh, oh well, yeah, yeah and, you know, and your mother and, you know, and <laughs> oh, right. And at some point, one of the two people arguing will kind of feel like, ooh, this is getting too icky. I feel like it, we need to lower the volume mm -hmm. and, and kind of bring it down. And they'll make a repair attempt. And so let me read you some. And, and oh, I'll go to the next page. Here is, do you remember the movie Charade with uh, yes. uh -huh. Audrey Hepburn and, uh, uh, was it? Cary Grant. Cary Grant, remember Very Grant. That? Walter Matthau. Oh, and, and so all during the all during the the movie, he's uh, saying, "Hey, I'm this person, and and here's what my role is." And then it turns out that that's not right. And then he finally, you know, and so finally at the end, he says, "You need to go turn in the jewels at the at the American Embassy." And so she walks into the room. And she sees him there, and here's the repair attempt. Oh, it doesn't show it. He makes a goofy face. Uh -huh. it's, it's, uh -huh. He makes a really goofy face. I just, it just kills it. This won't do it. But anyway, it's a, it's well. a really goofy face. Okay, so while I'm at it here, here's seven principles of making marriage work. This oh, a book. Uh, okay. <laughs> So if you are interested in talking in learning more about repair attempts, um, so ex some examples of repair attempts are um, to say, I'm sorry, uh, my reaction was too extreme, I'm sorry. Um, hey, let me try again. Or um, uh, I need things to be calmer right now. Might be a, a, a repair attempt or, um, Hey, I love you. Can we kind of lower the volume? Or hey, that's getting off the subject. Yeah. It's a repair attempt. It's saying that things have gotten out of hand. I don't like that. I wanted to kind of can we lower the volume? 
Okay, so it doesn't need to be said in a nice, gentle way. It means, hey, that's off the topic. Yeah, it's attention different. getting. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, how are we doing? Great. Uh, bathroom, I gotta go to the bathroom. Okay, I gotta I'll be go right to back. Okay, that's a, okay, if you're in an argument, I've got to go to the bathroom is a reason. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, time out, I gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah. Okay. Right back. Okay. So um any other comments? Well, kind of along that line, um, I actually have done this. So I have read that John Gottman book, I know about repair attempts. And sometimes, especially because I'm prideful, repair attempts are tough. So um, if it's a fight where there's crying involved, I get up and leave and go blow my nose and take longer than I need to take. And that's silly. We're joking about the bathroom break, but that really does help everybody kind of collect their thoughts for a few seconds. It, if you are able to have you and your husband, or if you, or if your main relationship is you know, you and your mother or you and your daughter or, you know, sister or whatever. If, if you have a healthy relationship, this is super good information for them to know so that if things start to get out of hand, this gives you vocabulary to say, hey, I'm starting to feel flooded. Could we take a time out so that I can calm down? so that we can you know not just waste time on this thing on or, or be more hurtful than it needs to be you know and just both you know go do a timeout and then come back okay that's pretty rare usually there's one person that is more mature than the other person okay and i think i know what to give my husband for our anniversary is that watch <laughs> yeah, bit, bit, yeah. <laughs> so but but I and I think the more that it gets that it stays at stuff about heart rate, the more that's a no harm no foul kind of deal. Yeah. Okay. It's saying you know what this is getting out of hand. Our bodies are we're not able to hear each other's good points. Okay. So so let's kind of calm it down a little bit. All right. So um, any other comments or questions? And then I'm going to do a uh, show you the cup and the frog. All right, uh, are, are we okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so let me see about this. How are we doing? Um, oh, Lord, help this to work. Okay. Um, okay, take this off. Put this on the full screen. Full screen and go. Uh -oh. Have you ever noticed that not all emotions are created equal? There are some that we like feeling, and there are others that feel super icky to us. Let me give you some examples of some feelings that, that are respectable kinds of emotions. Like, how about happy? If I'm feeling happy, I like that feeling of feeling happy. And if somebody notices me feeling happy, that's, that's all to the good. I like sharing that. Or if I just uh, nailed something that I was not sure if I was going to be able to succeed at it, and I, and I was able to do it, and I feel that sense of accomplishment, that feels really good to us. Um, mm -hmm. Or the feeling of being cheerful about something. This is like somebody in the grocery store line who will actually strike up a conversation say hey i just got good news that i'm, I'm going to be a grandparent that we like that feeling and we like sharing that feeling sharing yeah and even feel um okay to share the feeling of sadness if it's appropriate and a bunch of people in our group are also feeling that way so like if our team loses the super bowl we're we feel sad and it's sort of an icky feeling in itself, but all of our friends are feeling the same. So it's like my sadness is okay for me to share. And it's per there's a perfectly good 
explanation if somebody else sees me being sad. But there are some emotions that are in and of themselves really icky. Any time that I feel insecure, that's a feeling of really feeling icky. Or if I feel powerless or wimpy, that feels really icky. Or even oh, yeah. worse, if I feel abandoned or betrayed by somebody I trusted. Or what about if I'm suddenly really frightened or overwhelmed by a situation? Or how about if somebody made us feel stupid, like if they tricked us in some way? That feeling is an awful feeling. Or if somebody exposed us, we were in the middle of doing something we shouldn't have been doing, and somebody else sees us, and we feel all exposed by that. That's it. Oh, yeah. Or if we feel disrespected. Now, sadness is okay, but if I feel overwhelming grief about something, especially if it's grief, it's kind of a messy grief, not simple to explain, but but complicated, like somebody died who wasn't my favorite person, but it was my dad or it was my uncle. And I have this all this grief, but I, I don't even know how to talk about it. That feels icky. All of these feelings feel us weak and powerless and exposed. And we don't like feeling those feelings and we would hate it if somebody caught us feeling those things, we feel so icky about it that we want to cover up that icky feeling so with a more powerful emotion. Let's look at a quick example of an icky feeling and being covered over by a more powerful feeling. Let's imagine this woman. What do you think that this hey. mom feels in this moment? Oh. Right. She probably feels horrified. Oh, yeah. Ashamed. I'm, I'm a failure as a parent. She might feel doomed. My child will uh -huh. die. Or powerless to stop the traffic. Oh, yeah. well, let's imagine that the car is stopped and her kiddo makes it back to safely. Mom is feeling super icky feelings there, isn't she? So her brain instantly switches into a cover emotion and the, the nearest appropriate for her situation cover emotion is going to be anger right so yes. as soon as that little kid is back on the sidewalk again what does she do the anger feels stronger so the anger shifts the focus away to somebody else what's wrong with you i can't believe you did that i told you a thousand times do you see how that works now, of course, mature parents will recognize that anger, but they won't blast their kid with it. But in the moment, even a mature parent will feel that anger. This brings me to our main topic, and that is the cup and the frog, which I love showing people because it's such a cool illustration. I think you'll love it. So here's the cup, which is our cover emotion. Remember, we were talking about you see how there's this angry, angry emoji on the top of this. this is a, the anger feels hard and, and strong and sturdy. Nobody is going to get at, you know, to get be, be beneath the, the cup in this situation. But what is covering up is something that is like the frog. The frog, mm -hmm. it, do, you feel, do you see how uh, vulnerable this little guy is? Uh, frogs in, in nature are amphibians. They're really soft. It's easy for them to get squished. And they <laughs> could easily be traumatized or uh, crushed by somebody. So the, the vulnerable feeling is, is hidden under this, this cover emotion of anger. Um, now, and so he, let's say that this is two married couples, a married couple. <clears throat> a husband and wife, and they're arguing because the husband didn't take out the track when he was supposed to. Uh, so he has his, this is him and his cover emotion, and here's the wife. 
her vulnerable emotion and her anger about it that's covering over the the vulnerable feelings that she's feeling. And so as long as they are staying in a state of anger, they, there's a lot of conflict and friction. And more significantly, they, neither one of them can get out of this situation or this, this argument uh, that they're having because the anger is keeping them stuck here. If we switch it okay. just a minute to, I, I was just talking to this, uh, a, a lady who had had a, a disagreement with her sister that has lasted 30 years. So this little tray of whatever that topic of that argument was has kept them blocked for 30 years in a state of being angry and they can't escape it. So how do we solve this for these two guys who are stuck with their anger and they're stuck in this argument? Somebody, one or the other of them needs to be willing to set aside the anger at least temporarily. And let me show you how it could work out to do it that way. Someone can say, hey, would it be okay with you for just a few minutes if, if I set aside my anger and just and just talk about it and without the anger being there for a minute? Would that be okay with you? And could I ask, is there is that anger covering over another emotion that feels more vulnerable? I promise that if we need to, we'll come back and deal with the anger. But I'm just curious, is there something going on underneath? So if both yes. of them are willing to set that aside, now it's a conversation between the two frogs. And so maybe the, the guy will be saying something like, you know what, I felt really disrespected. And I felt not appreciated for all the stuff that I do around here besides uh, taking out the trash. And so you were making me feel like a kid. I didn't like that. And the, the wife may be looking at this and saying, well, actually, um, I was feeling overwhelmed by taking care of all of the things that are needed to be done to keep this house in order. And I was feeling abandoned a little bit because I thought that you were going to help me out, but it doesn't seem like you're helping me out. See, that's expressing what the vulnerable feeling is. And do you notice that I'm doing it in a softer voice? Yes. So what happens next that can help find a solution? First thing is for each of them to give comfort and reassurance to the other person's insecurity. Okay. Uh -huh. Say, oh, I, I'm so, and an apology for that thing will be much appreciated. So for the wife to say, I'm so sorry for treating you like a kid. I know that you're my husband. And I recognize that you do a lot of things around here. And I'm sorry for, for acting as if I was your mom instead of being your partner. And the husband may think, um, you know what, I, I, I'm, I really appreciate all that you do. And you're doing a great job of keeping the house together. And I'm sorry that I, you felt like I would abandon you. I really haven't. And then it might be a good idea for the two of them to kind of say, hmm, the problem isn't the trash. The problem might be something else. Is there a practical solution that we could come up with that would make it easier? So that like, you know what? It might be better for me to take out the trash in the morning. Would that be okay? Mm -hmm. And Or the husband may say, you know what? If you're feeling overwhelmed, how about if we get one of our nieces and nephews to come over and help us? help us out. We can pay them a little bit to help us out with the, yeah. with the um, you know, taking care of the housing needs. Do you see how that works out? What has happened there in that solution is that they address the actual thing that was driving the argument. Once that has been, has happened, the, little, the, the lovely thing about this little frog is even though it was fragile 
and you felt like it needed to be resolved, if you <laughs> deal with that, it's both flat. of them can, can escape I want from one. This, this, this thing blocking them. And yes. do we need to go back and resolve the anger? No, because the no, issue wasn't gone. anger. The issue, what was going on with the little, with the little frog part of them. Isn't that cool? One oh, yeah. thing, like it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it took a tremendous act of courage for each of the people to take that anger off and set it aside to let the other person see that vulnerable little underbelly the little frog that could easily get squished so it required an act of trust to let you see my frog now if we both end up by, by protecting and supporting each other's frog it builds long-term trust and it's kind of like we become the cup. Instead of the anger being the cup, we become the cup. I know that for my husband and I, I am very protective of the things that I know are my husband's uh, places of insecurity or frailty. And I know that my husband protects, he knows what, what drives my little frog's insecurities. And so he becomes protective of that. And that builds long-term trust. Yes. But if we allow the other person to see our vulnerable thing, and if the other person use that as ammo later on to throw that in our face and kind of squish that frog, it destroys long-term trust. Yes. So it comes with this fallen responsibility but a blessing because it's much better to be somebody who can escape, uh, you know, arguing and a, a difficult situation. How do you like that? Wonderful. And stop share. That was great. Have you ever? That wait, not all wait, of wait. Are creative Okay, people. where are they? There are some oh that we gosh. like feeling, <laughs> and there are others that feel super icky to us. Let me give you some examples. Of back. <laughs> okay. Now let's stop sharing. Let's see if that works. Okay. So that, how did you like that? Oh, Sorry. wonderful. That's, that's helpful, Miss Didi. Um, I like the ending of mm -hmm. it. Like, um, I mean, of course, you have to talk it out and, you know, use that strategy to apply with your you know with your issues and mm -hmm. then at the end you and your spouse or your partner will end up um like protecting your vulner vulnerabilities mm -hmm. you know like and i like that part like yeah. he knows and i would know what you know uh that triggers him and things that i i just need to stay away from or you know mm -hmm. not to bring up or things like that i i like that yeah, when, yes. I, when you were saying those things, those are the things that's coming in my mind. Like, okay, now I just have to, yeah, like you said, protect it. Yeah, yeah. To be so, as the partner can be protective mm -hmm. of the person. Okay. Mm -hmm. The now, um, what happens if the other person it has a good heart? but they are not able to help us with the part that's our baggage. Mm. Okay. Cause you know, yeah. there's Wouldn't one time, be. remember at the beginning, there's here's the, here's the first three little things from one to 10. This part is the actual argument. Um, I think a lot of, of you know, uh, if somebody comes into it and they, and they're just a, you know, just give me the facts, ma'am, kind of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> they're wanting to solve that little part at the beginning. Right. Okay. And so the more that we can bring it back to solving the part that's at the beginning, that's really good. Okay. But we bring in whatever it is we bring in. Okay. And so, so this is a way of helping us in our frailty to, you know, find a way of, of getting a resolution 
to the argument that that uh, you know helps each side to be heard. But um, uh, but uh, what 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 needs to happen with that part that's like between the three and the eight? What mm -hmm. needs to happen with that part? Well, I'm not sure if this is answering your question, but um, one super key factor is whether or not that other person is someone who you trust yeah. to have that vulnerability. So that let's just yeah. assume yeah. for the sake of this discussion that you have that trust. Yeah. So what I have experienced over the years is um, I know a lot of this stuff and I have verbalized it not in a time of fighting. So yeah. I have told my husband, here's these things and he is holding them like you said, yeah. he's yeah. holding those things. So if we do get into a fight and I'm way up here and I understand that it's not realistic because I've already verbalized that in a time that was not high tense, I'll just say, you know what, this is, I will say it, this is triggering this thing. It's not even about this. So if you have a safe mm -hmm. person that you can do that with, yeah. that de-escalates almost everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that like would. you said, building the trust over the years, I also know that on the other side, I know when there's triggers that it's pretty obvious once you do this and you practice this, you know when <laughs> this is not yeah. about what you're fighting about, you know? Yeah. yeah. So one thing that um has it's I just can't stress how important it is that the other person is trusted. So one thing my husband had told me a long time ago was when we're fighting, for example, uh, because I have a lot of baggage, he has said, you need to come into this fight with the assumption that I'm looking after, I'm not trying to hurt you. My goal is never to uh, hurt you. I married you and I love you. And my goal is never to hurt you. Yeah. So that saying statements like that may seem small, but that has carried that us 14 yeah. years later. I always in the back of my mind, hear him physically saying those words, like, he's not out to get me. He's not trying to fight with me. He yeah. doesn't want me to, he loves me. He doesn't want what's bad. Yeah. So if yeah. you yourself verbalize those things, um, it can all, without even much work, bring that eight or nine back down because you have an internal mm -hmm. dialogue. Yeah. You've already got it there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other, any other comments? Yes. Vidi, I just a question. If, that you become very vulnerable and you say this situation or what you know what you said or what you did made me feel this way etc and the, the other person's remark is oh you always see yourself as a victim that's not true it's just what you believe yeah you do <laughs> well um i would evaluate that this person is not a person to uh to uh share my prog with Okay, in a situation like that, the, my, the best solution is to stick with the, the um, Colossians 315 that, um, that uh, you know, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart since as members mm -hmm. of one body, you are called to peace. Okay, and I would say, so I'm responsible with this person to, to you know, to bring myself down to get control of myself and i've given you some practical things for us to get control of ourselves Absolutely. and our own reaction so that we come back in to the window of tolerance right and, and mm -hmm. we don't if, if the other person has proven themselves to not be safe to deal with our you know to re, for us to reveal more things to them then we it is our it is a wisdom for us not to reveal that to them, okay? And mm -hmm. people live in a in a, uh, a dream world uh, where we are hoping that they'll be able to help us and do things that we want them to do. If even if they if it, it they are not capable of of doing mm -hmm. what we what we're wishing they could do. So part of of letting the peace of Christ rule in our hearts is to get a, a very um, a, 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 a realistic view of what the other person can and can't do. 
and what they can and can't give to us, okay? And I say this as somebody who tried to work things out with my mom and for years and years, banged my head against the wall for years and years. And, you know, she would collect all the little tidbits that I, you know, let, let drop. And then they would be ammo, you know? She would get ticked off about something and she would just throw things at it and completely misinterpret and all that stuff. And so I needed to be, I need to get control of myself so that I'm in control of what I'm communicating and in control of, of how to resolve the disagreement. Okay. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that clarifies a lot. And it kind of brings me back to the passage where Jesus sent out sent them out to preach in the different villages and he says and if they don't receive you just shake this the, you know shake the dirt off your feet move on and i think that this is we can apply that we can uh you know try to speak to the other person but if we start coming with that uh you know that kind of a combat uh come back yeah. and just say okay, well thanks thanks a yeah. lot and move on i i want to say something about this for my own training um, and encourage you to do this if you can. Um, I, I, that diagram where there's the, the first three is what the argument would warrant and the, 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 you know, the, five, the next five are just my stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. I, have, I have taken it as a solemn responsibility that if I'm in a, if it's, 11 o'clock at night and we've both been, you know, busy all day and we're just grumpy, you know, I, um, oh, oh, I should tell you my, when, when my husband and I were first married and we, uh, and I, you know, I was, I had nothing resolved from my childhood and I was just a mess. Okay. So it was like, we'd have a fight that was like a two and I'm at nine. You know, I mean, I'm just off the wall angry. There are two things that helped me. One is that Jim and I uh, made a decision after a bunch of arguments that we had, we had the nine o'clock rule. And the nine o'clock rule is that, that we uh, solemnly promise not to begin a discussion of a sensitive subject after 9 p.m. Because even if we started out, you know, calm and collected, we are no good at 9 p.m. And <laughs> chances are high that even bringing that thing up at after nine was going to lead to an roll argument. Thing. And yeah. that would roll, you know. And so what, what would happen, what we learned to do is if somebody wanted to talk about something or it needed to be, we would say, okay, now because of the nine o'clock rule, so let's figure out a time tomorrow that we can talk about this, you know, when we're both fresh and can and can and mm -hmm. be at our best. Okay, so the nine o'clock rule really helped us. That's okay. good. And then, the, uh, and then the second rule that I had, because it was mostly me, I mean, Jim, it's just really <laughs> sad to say yeah. this. Jim is kind of a saint I mean I, <laughs> yeah. I, I it, and you know it's kind of tough living with a saint but yeah. anyway um yeah. but, but um so at, especially at the beginning we fought like cats and dogs and usually it was me flying off the handle if he said boo you know and <laughs> so I I made a after a while I made a rule to say okay I'm gonna go to the wall every other time go to the i'm going to go to the wall every other time and if i and if i couldn't remember if i had cut him a break the last time okay now's the time that i need to cut him a break and not argue about this okay uh. and i didn't know does that make does that seem silly it was like okay i'm every time something comes up i'm just like you know ready to you know you know, yeah. <laughs> the Alamo, sword out. <laughs> uh, you know for, for every little thing and so that that rule just helped me a lot to go okay I'm going to give him a pass this time and not you know not me be the one that initiates 
okay, why are you, why are you doing it that, you know, like that <laughs> for, the, for me to stop. Okay. Yeah. And so that started as that helped us at the beginning. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and as I have gotten much more to the place of lots of things healed and Jim and I have a, have a shorthand when we talk, um, I, I've made it my responsibility that if something came up in the argument where I noticed that I got triggered by something that had nothing to do with Jim, it was me. Yes. That, that after that argument, I make the time to spend with the Lord so that I go over oh. that thing with the Lord because Jim, it's not Jim's job. Mm -hmm to help me resolve all my insecurity or to endlessly be protective of my getting triggered. Yeah. Not his task. Not a way to live. Yeah. It needs to be on me to go before the Lord and say, okay, this is what happened. This got, this got triggered. And there are a couple of the entries in the, in the book where, mm -hmm. where I mentioned, and they were in the ones that, that we talked about where I got angry or something. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of times it was like, I resolved it with Jim, but then I need to go and do the next step and to resolve it before the Lord so that the Lord can help me resolve it. And that's not in an argument with Jim. It's just me and the Lord figuring that out and me coming to peace. So mm -hmm. I stop being triggered by so many darn things yeah okay does that make sense it does yeah you got to take responsibility of of your baggage yeah mm -hmm. and and if you need help on that come and make appointments with me to <laughs> work that out so that i can teach you how to go about you know figuring out what was the root cause what is you know, what was the memory that led to it and blah, 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 and mm -hmm. figure all that stuff out so that, yeah. so that we so that we have less and less and less that we get triggered by. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? How are we doing? Oh, yeah. can we, I show you something real quick yeah. on that? Yeah, I, I bought this for my granddaughter and all this is right with it. It's yeah. with the uh, oh, how to deal with difficult people. Book. Yeah, so that maybe she could understand her mom and what's triggering her. Of course, she really knows mom's feeling guilty for going out gambling and drinking and leaving her at home. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. this has been happening happening all her life. So maybe this will help. Plus, I'll let her know yeah. what we discussed today. Yeah, this would be a, a good one for her to just watch. It's a standalone. Yeah. Nothing related from the book. Yeah. Right. Any last comments or questions? Thank you. Was this helpful? <laughs> Wonderful. This has been great. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. A lot of information. I I'm going to suggest to the rest of the ladies to watch the video because it's very great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next week, we're going to talk about compassion overload. This is the third one from uh, helping other people to collect themselves. So we've helped somebody to collect themselves compassion. last week and when they're afraid or in crisis. This is helping us and the other person to collect themselves in an argument. And next week is aftermath. Um, the compassion. How, how to recover, to recover oh. our, our peace after we've helped somebody in some way. Okay? okay. Uh, All righty. Like yeah. Thank All right. Thank so you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.